so hey everyone in this video we are going to uh, configure the mongodb database connection in a very elegant way okay so just as we saw in the boilerplate code if we go to the database and index.ts we just have a simple uh, database connection which will connect to our database using the credentials okay so this is to connect to the database which we are running locally okay so if you want you can also connect to the database which is already hosted on mongodb atlas so here i'm taking the example of a locally set up mongodb instance okay so we just uh, connect to mongoose uh, based on the uri that we provide where mongodb is the protocol and we just need to specify all the credentials like the username password just as how you would uh, configure using sql so we specify the post and sorry host and then the port and then the database name as well so then we just pass into the connect function and once this uh, promise resolves then we just use a callback saying mongodb connected which will just you know log it to the console so if there is any error like let's say the password is incorrect then it will get caught within this block okay so this is just a simple one so we can also do some advanced configuration which will ensure that uh, our database is secure and uh, making it much more optimized okay so this is not the optimized one so i'm just going to replace this with the optimized code so i have just pasted in the mongoose configuration which is slightly advanced so it has about 70 lines of code so i'll just take you step by step basically we are uh, customizing the configuration for mongoose with mongodb by providing some additional options that we can uh, you know pass in to ensure that our database is secure and it won't it has to perform the way we want it to perform okay so first thing is we have is the db uri so here we have just uh, encoded the password in inside this uh, javascript function that is encode uri component okay so we just don't do expose the raw password of the database so if it is exposed then anybody can you know log into our database even though it is you know running locally okay so for that we just uh, pass in the db password inside this your encode uri component and this will encode the password and then this will be read by the mongoose as we pass in okay as uh, within this connect function so what this component actually does is if we pass in some string like this so let's say this is the database password so it will just encode by just adding some additional characters to it okay so just as it says over here it encodes the uri by replacing each instance of certain characters by one two three or four escape sequences okay so make sure it makes sure that it breaks in between the string characters and uh, using the utf8 encoding of the character okay and later it uh, you know mongoose will actually decode it and then uh, you know use that as a password okay so that's why it is recommended that we use this approach as a good practice to you know encode our passwords and then we have is the options which is an object which we can just pass in to mongoose like this okay along with the db uri so while it makes the connections we also pass in certain options okay so let's explain you what are these actually so auto index we set this to true okay or in specific we can just set this to development basically if we want faster retrieval of data so we can just specify index for every table we have in the, within mongodb okay and this is not necessary for production just for the sake of testing and for faster development we can just set this to true so if you are in production you can you know of course set this to false so you can just make a condition over here for so for now i have just set this to true so while pro pushing it for production i can set this to false okay so then we have the minimum pool size and maximum pool size so what this does is it specifies the minimum number of socket connections the connection pool should actually maintain okay so the value of this should be defined actually within our config.ts which we haven't yet so we can just uh, set this inside this db object over here so we have the min pool size where uh, we get it from the .env file so if it doesn't exist then we say minimum is 5 and then maximum 10 so basically minimum 5 you know socket connections that our pool can establish and then we have the maximum as 10 okay so that's why we are passed in here to this object so for small scale applications this actually doesn't matter much so if you are having a large scale applications where a lot of users are uh, you know visiting your, your application and that time this actually matters okay so then we have the connection timeout so it defines how long the driver should wait when trying to establish a successful connection before it fails okay so af when this is actually passed in as milliseconds so after 10 seconds okay it it will wait and if it uh, still doesn't connect then it will just fail okay? so basically it will prevent the app from waiting indefinitely and if mongodb is actually unreachable okay so we just don't want to wait for eternity so we just want to timeout after 10 seconds and uh, this will help detect network failures and also 
take corrective actions as well okay then we have is the socket timeout so this specifies the time in which mongodb connection remains open and it is idle before closing so what this actually does is it prevents the app from waiting too long if mongodb stops responding okay so what this line actually says is to close the socket connection after 45 seconds of its inactivity okay so we just don't want to open the socket connection for long so we just want to close it if it is not in use okay so that will actually save in a lot of resources okay and then we have the logger which in specific we are using the debug as the level or we run this file so that will make a log within our uh, logs directory and then we have the mongoose set strict query to true so basically when we pass in some additional filters for example if you want to filter all the to dos based on certain criteria okay so if the criteria is not actually there while we are querying so let's say we have the uh, let's say we do not have the status of is progressed so if you want to filter based on that so if we don't even have that column within our database so that would still filter if we do not have this strict query set to true okay so it would give us some unexpected results okay so we just want to ideally set this to true okay so basically if that filter doesn't exist so it should give us an error okay so that's why it says that strict query make this make that to true so this line actually makes sense okay so then we have the connect function where we pass in the db uri so this connection string and then we pass in options so along with that we have another function called plugins so this is basically to run validators whenever we want to update a record in mongodb so before any one of these um, update function executes we just want to run this validators so basically it's nothing but a function that has an object with a property called run validators and set that to true so normally mongoose only applies the validation when we call the save function right when we want to create a record or even if we call the create function so that actually the validators will run only if we call that functions but not on update operations okay so we just want to also make that run even on update operations so that's why we are setting this explicitly the value to true okay so ideally we just want to add the statement okay so just like a boilerplate code which we want to configure okay so nothing much so we just uh, anytime we create a node project we just uh, set this up and then uh, then we use a logger function that we actually created saying that mongoose connection is done so that that will just uh, make a record within our logs so if there is a failed connection that would also log so then later on we can just come back at what timestamp did when a user tried to connect to a database and the connection failed so then we just have some events that are emitted once the connection has been established okay so when we have is the connected so we just uh, you know recording all those events that are emitted so we just lo logger.debug and then setting that to along the connection string so if there is an error so that would also log the error to our logger then so it would also log that error to our logs file and uh, if the connection is disconnected then we just want to again do the same thing okay so basically it will record every single event that is emitted and uh, what is the event actually and based on that we pass in this message and it will also record the timestamp so if i just show you a sample over here you see that it will record in this format so first we pass in the level and then the message and then the timestamp so this level is whatever we pass in over here so logo.info error or debug okay so we already saw this in the last video and then we have the process termination so this is an event that will emit from node.js so if there is a process that has been terminated so then we just want to uh, again log that and then gracefully shut down okay so without any errors unexpected errors okay so that's what uh, that's how i would ideally you know configure mongodb so if you are if we are actually building a large scale application and then if you want to we can also export the connection by saying mongoose.connection so we might need this connection uh, basically if we want to configure this anywhere basically if you are building any singleton classes which we will see later in the video okay so this is how i would uh, configure mongodb so this is just like a boilerplate code so anytime i want to build a backend node node.js app so i would just copy paste this and then modify the uh, db uri so based on the project that i'm building and also the credentials okay so i hope you like this video so you can just take a screenshot if you want uh, and of course the code is available within the uh, github repository which you can find within the description of this video so that's it for this video so i hope you liked it so make sure you subscribe and i will see you guys in the next video